All right, people, welcome, welcome to this episode of The Visionary Experience. Today, we have a very special show for you. Coming live and direct from South Florida, we have Mr. Sermet Beck of the Beck Insurance Group, and we have my man, Sean Gorell from Legacy Insurance Group right here, homegrown in Virginia. So welcome, fellas. How are you both doing? Cheers, Glad to be here. man. Cheers. All right, all right. So... Listen, so the way that we kind of all got connected, well, I've known Sean for a while, but just in case if people don't know, we really had a great time a few weeks ago in South Florida at the the Vault, you know, the Vault 2021 conference, which was fantastic, really focused on entrepreneurs. So I'm not going to give them too much free advertising, but it was a great time, um, you know, nonetheless. So I'm glad that the, the three of us were, were able to connect. And thank you guys so much for, for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having so, us. Absolutely. And I really look at both of you as uh, as insurance experts, you know, and in different areas of financial services as experts. And from the conversations that we we've had, I really wanted to make sure that our audience could could get some of the value that I got and that you can share some of your expertise and some of your experience with them as well. So we're going to pretty much dive right in. So I'm going to start off with you, Sean. So initially what what really got you into the into the insurance industry several several years ago well how the insurance industry found me i would say the the story is twofold right so i read a statistic that 73 percent of people graduate college and, and go into professions unrelated to their major uh, so such was the case for me i recall there was uh, the fortune 100 company that i eventually went on to go work for outside of college, put on a job fair while I was uh, a senior at James Madison University. And then coincidentally, when I was marketing myself post-graduation, uh, we kind of found each other, right? So that was one of the employers that I had an interest in uh, simply because their their long history and, and their financial stability in the financial services industry. So it worked out well worked out well for that short period of time. And then, you know, five years after working uh, with them, I saw the vision of what could be for myself and my future. If I went against the odds and started to, you know, go into business for myself and design my own future. And that's kind of where we're at now, building Legacy Insurance Group. Fantastic. And so also for you, Sir Matt, what originally got you um, interested in insurance and in, in the insurance industry? I came, I came kind of from a similar path that Sean did. Um, initially, though, like I was going to school full time, partying full time, and running an electronic <laughs> store full time. <laughs> so then, uh, you know, running around in a small business, running a store like that, doing sales, management, recruiting, the whole nine. And, you know, especially working for somebody else, you see that. What you're doing is, is valued, but at the same time, you're not really paid that well for it. So uh, a friend of mine was getting re recruited by Liberty Mutual at the time. And he's like, listen, I'm fine where I'm at, but talk to my boy, Sir Met. And then one phone call later, I literally did the phone interview that day. And one thing led to another. And I was working for Liberty Mutual for maybe about three years, three or four years in New Jersey was one of the top agents in New Jersey for a while. And then I moved to Florida. And from Florida, I transferred offices. And then I always had the entrepreneur heart, entrepreneur, you know, drive it in me, maybe from my parents or, or wherever else I picked it up from. And I was like, I got to do this on my own. And I started in 2019 on my own. Got it. Fantastic. So off the jump, <laughs> It sounds like you have excellent time management skills because you party full time, <laughs> you ran the store full time, you're working full time, you're hustling full time, right? Every day you're hustling, right? Every day hustling, hustling. Right, exactly. Hey, I admire you. you need to do one of those online courses on how to how to juggle full time hustle. So let me let me one ask day. you this then. Yes, yeah, so you know, working for a large, both of you working for law, a large, well-established, you know, possibly, probably fortune 500 company, what motivated you? And I'm talking to you right now, sir, man, what motivated you personally and what gave you that drive to say, okay, you know what, this is great where I'm at, 
but I want to essentially graduate or break off and do something for myself on my own. What were some of those, those, those key motivating factors for you? Kind of learning, learning about the business. So the whole thing with the insurance business is, is um, getting into the renewals and, and kind of building a book of business where um, you keep, you keep hustling, you keep grinding, but it comes to a point where you could build a book of business and either pass it down to your kids or it could end up being a retirement plan, or you could sell it, or you, it gives you a lot of different options. And I had a really great manager at Liberty Mutual too that kind of helped me build my confidence, build my systems, where I I was able to realize, hey, I could I, I I know what I'm doing, I see my system, and I could repeat it wherever I go. So that that he was he was definitely a key part in making me realize mm-hmm. that part, and then and then having the entrepreneur. Um, blood in me and and seeing where the insurance business can take me and being able and and realize i could do this on my own was 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 kind of the key factor just jumping ship and 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 starting no absolutely and so would you you know would you say was it were you a bit nervous at the beginning or was it something that you were just ready to to do no i mean i was making six figures maybe you know a good amount of money i have two kids Mm-hmm. I have a wife, I had a house, um, you know, so kind of leaving all of the stability there and right. going back to zero with kids and a wife and a life and all the exp- the expenses don't stop. Right. But luckily I was in a place where I had, you know, I saved up some money. I sold my house in Jersey before I moved mm-hmm. to Florida. I had a little cushion there. The four hundred one k was an was another cushion, so it was calculated, but it was definitely a big risk that that I was willing to take, and I knew if I took it, um, the life on this side is um, was more appealing to me because in the day I have a big value of freedom, right? So my my whole thing is my whole thing in life is freedom, freedom, do what you want, whenever you want. And and working for yourself is a big deal for me. So, but at, at the end of the day, when we work for ourselves, we're working for our customers. So, our my customers is my bosses, along right. with my wife. <laughs> no, fantastic. No, that's great uh, because I I you know we'll, as we get into the podcast, I'll share some some things with you as well. But definitely a few of your points I have in common with you. You know, so I can definitely connect with you. And so, what about you, Sean? I know that you and I, and I have had several conversations about this, but. Um, if you could just share, you know, again, with our audience, what were some of the the key motivating factors uh, that helped you to to you know jump off the diving board per se and and go into the the entrepreneurial waters? Well, it's funny you should ask that. I mean, how Sir met and myself met was in twenty seventeen in Scottsdale, Arizona at the annual leaders conference. so that recognizes the top ten percent of uh, the producers. Mm-hmm. And I started to notice a trend that a lot of the high producing agents that I would meet year after year, uh, when we would go back to these conferences, they'd no longer be with the company. And, and so I started to notice that, you know, they were betting on themselves. They were starting to mm. uh, put together this larger vision, which they were not not captive, but creating their own future, building businesses and so I realized that if I'd stayed in the position that I was, I'd be, you know, just this cog in a wheel. They wanted right. to keep producing, but I wanted to do more than that. Right. So I had, I had some difference of ideas where, you know, I think the organization should head or certain management practices that I wanted to see implemented, but you have very little control, you know, at that level in the organization. And I like having control over mm. as much things as I can. Right. And so, although the journey is more difficult, you know, the the beauty of entrepreneurship <clears throat> is that it's, it's it's your success or your failure. You have to own it 100%. So if you create, uh, you know, a multi-million dollar organization that, that empowers people and employs people and has impact in the community, that's something that you can take credit for. You know, however, if you, if you try your hand at entrepreneurship and it's a total disaster, you've got to own that, too. So it's it's revealing in that it uh, it's a great self-discovery program. 
it's a great self-improvement program. Yes. And, and if you do well at it and master it, it has the highest compensation plan than mm. any other profession. No, I, I love that. And so both of you bring up some, some, some key points. And so, um, I think I'd share this with both of you, but you know, for myself, I used to work for the federal government for several years and I used to live up in New Jersey as well. And when we moved back down here to Virginia is when, um, I had resigned several years ago, but I'd put about a, about a good year of thought and prayer and getting advice, you know, before really going out on my own, because just like with you, Samet, being married, two kids, like, okay, can I at least replicate what I was making? Because the bills don't stop. You know, they don't care, you know, and I had to really think about that. And I think also what you had mentioned, Sean, is absolutely critical because I had to say, okay, am I going to bet on myself? You know, am I going to say, I have the skills and abilities to get out here and I'm going to eat what I kill. And that's, that's what it's, what it's going to be and, and have the vision to make that happen. And I'm not going to lie. It was, it was definitely nervous. Uh, but it's, it's also very exhilarating because it's like we all talked about in that book, the blue ocean strategy, right? There is like, there's like so much possibility and there's so much opportunity that you can actually create and design for yourself, it kind of just got my blood going, you know, it's like, yes. And so I think for me, when I kind of get down, when uh, I feel a little bit burnt out, when I remember, okay, there's a lot of possibility, there's a lot of opportunity and I get to design it for myself. I get to determine that it really helps to, it really helps to invigorate me, you know, personally when I definitely need it. And so what are the, some of the things that you, you both draw upon because being entrepreneurs, being especially in the insurance industry, in the financial services field, it can be challenging. And you do learn a lot about yourself. And there's a lot of self-analysis. So what are some of the things that you both draw upon when you, you, you face some struggles and some obstacles? So either one of you can go ahead and answer that. You want to go first, Sean? Yeah, I'll start with myself. Um, I, I, I like to dream about possibility. Right. So mm -hmm. I think life is short. You have a very finite window of what you can achieve, not only in your personal and professional world, but it inspires me to kind of see other people winning at a very high level and affirm to myself that this can also be possible for me. So, I, you know, I don't know how long this life will last, but until it ends, I want to see how hot my candle can burn. Right. I want to mm. see how many people. I can impact. I want to see how much I can grow, how much I can develop, how much I can learn, how much I can do. And so that is, that's what motivates me. If I wanted to stay stagnant, I would have just stayed in my previous role. Mm -hmm. and I would have gotten to enjoy a different style of work-life balance, you know, sleeping in, uh, getting to watch Netflix at night, but there's a trade-off, right? Those are luxuries. I don't, I can't afford so most of my most of my waking life is spent building this business, putting together business plan strategies for me to attract the things that I ultimately want. So I want to I want to look back at my life when I'm 50, 60, 70, 80, 80 years old and have no regrets about how I spend my time and um, really just affirm to myself that, you know, I gave it my all, you know, because not everybody's blessed to live in the United States where there's infinite opportunity. So I feel like it's an obligation for me. It's a duty of mine to, you know, take full advantage of the privilege that I have and the opportunities that I have. Definitely appreciate that. And what about you, sir, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. Very similar to Sean's, um, you know, growing up first generation, first, my, you know, my parents came here from another country, you know, all they knew was, basically food, shelter, clothing, and, you know, love for us, basically. You know, that that, that, that was their instinct. They didn't see beyond that. Um, so my thing is, you know, go beyond that, climb up that hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and really self-develop, self-develop, self-develop. But also, you know, there was times, in, you know, when, we, when I first got married where I, I didn't know how I was going to pay rent. You know, rent bills coming, and you 
you're fighting teeth and nails. Thank God, you know, God, God provides. You know, God, you know, I have a strong belief in God, and you know, He figures that He figures out and gets me going. But you know, I never want to. I never want to see that day again where I'm fighting to figure out how I'm going to pay rent. I don't, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to look at my bank account and see, you know, less than a certain number in there. Just that, that's kind of what keeps me going. I think about that. And then mm-hmm. I, I, I try to have these big, big goals and, and visions of really helping people, number one. But I have a soft spot for kids and, and veterans. So my eventual goal is to help kids in some way, needy kids, either doing a nonprofit or it doesn't have to be official next best either, but definitely um, make an impact with kids and, and maybe involving veterans' kids in there somehow. I believe, you know, veterans fight for our country and they're getting short and right. sick of it. Um, so, yeah, just just try to create unique ways in helping people, uh, helping people in, in, you know, during the insurance process as well, you know, educating them the best they can, providing good coverage, don't skimp out on coverage because that could cost them more money than they don't that they don't have. And um, yeah, the, the the kids thing is a big is a big deal for me too. Okay, and not not having to think about how I'm gonna pay rent. No, absolutely, and <clears throat> you know, you remind me of something. So I used to I used to live in New Jersey. I used to live in East Brunswick. You know, shout out to Middlesex County. No, I think that's uh that's another county. Think, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it'll come to me. <laughs> My people in Jersey are like, what are you doing? So <laughs> we had just bought this is uh wow, this is two thousand I don't know, eight, somewhere somewhere around there. We had just bought a house in East Brun um in, in East Windsor, in East Windsor, New Jersey. And you know, I was doing mortgages full time at the time. And that was right when the housing crash kind of just jumped off. And over a period of about seven months, I tell you the truth, I literally lost about 60% of my clients because all of my clients were either stated income, stated asset, right? You know, uh, no income, no asset, the, the, the famous ninja, like all of that. That was a good portion of my clientele. And it all went away. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you both is because there was about a six or seven month time frame where I would I would walk around. My, we lived in like, it wasn't a cul-de-sac, it was kind of a big circle. I would walk around that circle and I would pray because I would pay the mortgage either on the 29th or the 30th of the month, every month, every month. And I promised myself, I said, I never ever want to feel this way again because it is such a it's a feeling of powerlessness of frustration there were a lot of tears there's a lot of tears anger like indignation like i there's so many different and i even i and i and i asked god i was like i never want to forget like i didn't want to leave that in the past because i want to remember that emotion because that's part of what drives me and i'm grateful that we always paid the mortgage on time we always had food you know, we were able to, you know, but we weren't able to go on vacation. <laughs> like we weren't able to do a lot of things. I just had my little girl, but I'm telling you what you share that really strikes a chord with me because I remember that, you know, I remember that. And being from Baltimore, growing up in the city, um, I, I, it, it helped me now to remember. It's like, man, people were going through that all the time. But when I was young, I really couldn't identify that because I wasn't an adult, Right. But think about the people that are going through that regularly, but may not have an outlet uh, with regards to their finances, you know, um, which leads me to this. What would you recommend? Uh, what would you recommend as an insurance product, for example, or two, that would be fantastic for people who want to be able to build and establish a financial legacy? For their families, because there is a there's a going viewpoint about insurance, and there's so many misnomers and misunderstandings about what insurance is, right? How what would you recommend for people who want to build a true financial legacy for their families? Life insurance, specifically. Well, universal universal index life is one of my favorite products. Okay, so can you? Yeah, so. 
and, and please provide like provide some some context for people who may not be as fully um, versed in that. But go ahead. You want to go for it, I would say it depends on on the the end goal. Right? Okay. So, you know, it, it, the ultimate problem that we're trying to solve is getting towards the end of life and and having final expenses and debt. Um, then some version of permanent life insurance is essential, right? This is this is the main differentiator between the family that is forced to go to their church and ask for donations or start a GoFundMe account and the family that passes generational wealth to their, their heirs, right? So if, if, if you invest in yourself while you're young and healthy, you'll pay low affordable premiums, but there has to be a, a bigger why than, than just your immediate time here on earth, right? So life insurance is not a product that benefits you directly. It, mm. It's going to benefit your family when you're not there to uh, be able to see it. Right. So you got you got to see it in your mind. You got to have a vision of your family doing better than you um, when your time is up. And so, you know, various times, various types of life insurance are, are more suitable for certain clients. Right. So somebody that does invest in themselves and puts away money consistently into a retirement vehicle, if they're originating a 30 year mortgage loan, 30 year term insurance might be appropriate as long as there's no underlying need to, you know, have money available after they pass. Right. So we're big on legacy planning. It's kind of the reason for the name of the agency. So we're, we're very big into life insurance and, you know, we've, we've got some stories of people that we've helped over the years. It, it really makes a tremendous difference, you know, having that product available, mm -hmm. investing in it, securing it outside of where one works, you know, it's the same concept between renting and owning. Hmm. I would say that's that's probably the biggest way that Sir Met and I impact lives is is the financial products that we sell. Because a, a home can be rebuilt, a vehicle can be repaired, but if something happens to you in your life, I mean, that's it. Yeah. No. Absolutely. No. Appreciate that. And what about what are your thoughts, Sir Met, with regards to that? <clears throat> yeah. I mean. I kind of diving in a little bit more i mean i was lucky enough uh when i was working at the electronics store there was no 401k plan for a small business so they got in a financial advisor at the time i was maybe 22 23 years old and he so kind of sold to me as a retirement plan which which made sense to me at the time especially but he sold me an index universal life policy and at that time i was 22 23 years old so the cost of insurance was so low the money I was able to put away inside of there was was significant because the insurance cost was so low. Um, and I was living at home at the time with, 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 with my parents, so I was able to stack in as much money as I can, which was amazing because now I'm 36 and I'm a big guy. So it's, it's, it's not hard for me to get insurance, but it's expensive. So I thank God that I did that policy way back when. So now my insurance cost is still low because it's, it's at the age I got it at, and my kids have something, God forbid something happens to me. Not only does my kids have something, but say, you know, hopefully I outlive, I outlive all of it, and at 65, there's my cash in there that I can do whatever I want with. And, and the way it looks now, it's probably going to be half a million, maybe more, even more in there, depending on how much money I put in there. So it's, no, it's definitely a vehicle that everybody should take advantage of if they can. If they can't, at least... Um, you know, maybe start a small term policy this way. They have, you know, term policies. I mean, we could dive into life insurance, but a lot of life insurance policies have living benefits. So even if they get sick um, or if they have cancer, if they have a heart attack, the life insurance policy will still pay out something uh, to pay for those medical bills or whatever else. Mm. So 90% of, of people going bankrupt a lot of times is, is from medical bills. So, so, you know, life insurance could kick in and, and help with that as well. No, that's amazing. Yeah, so I'm gonna put yeah. you guys on, put you guys on the spot then, real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna test you. So there is a debate, right? Um, you know, there's people out there who have uh, different financial teachings, and they say, "Well, wait a minute." For example, if someone's paying, let me just pick a number. Let's say someone's paying about 300 bucks a month for an index universal life policy, right? Probably about a right number, two, three hundred, maybe even more. 
But there's people who say, well, wait a minute, why would you do that versus getting a term life policy for $40 and invest the difference, let's say in a, in a Roth IRA, because I've heard that argument many times. What are your thoughts with regards to that? Either way, is there is there any benefit one way or the other? What are your, what, what's your opinion? I think the people that you know critique one strategy or the other usually don't end up practicing either. <clears throat> Right. So I like it. The ones that say, well, why would I spend my money <laughs> on this if I could just invest it here? Mm-hmm. Are usually the ones that don't invest it anywhere. So, I mean, different strategies to reach the same goal. I would say, why, why would you rely on your employer to provide that benefit for you and your family? It's not their responsibility. Uh, it, the only reason that you're purchasing an insurance product is because it's mandated because you know, you, you need to buy commercial insurance to rent out a commercial space or buy home insurance to protect your mortgage interest mm-hmm. or buy auto insurance because the DMV says you have to. Then then we're missing the entire concept of the reason why insurance is important. It's designed to protect against risk. And so right. we help we help solve problems for the modern insurance buyer. We help people protect what they love and value most. We help educate and consult on all forms of risk. And so there's trade-offs for sure. But I would say in any decision that you make, you got to delay gratification. You got to see the value in the end that if Mm -hmm. life is unpredictable, if something happens, you either are prepared for that accident or unforeseen event occurring or you're not. And so we, I'm sure Sir Matt has plenty of stories as I do where people have not taken our advice and and things have happened. And, you know, all, all that we can say is that we know we've, we've, we've done our best to educate Uh, people ultimately ultimately take a risk, right? Cause that's the insurance field is assessing risk. Mm -hmm. Got it. No, absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sermat. So, yeah, I mean, going back to um, why, why one or the other, Life insurance at the end of the day gives you a little bit more options with, with you know, some of the products that me and Sean sell, there's the living benefit, which I think is huge, basically disability insurance built into the life insurance policy. Uh, plus, if you if you if that person happens to pass away, it's tax free money to the beneficiary, whereas the other way around, um, sometimes it has to go through probate, it just depends on what they have on the other side. but. Um, just, it just, it's more options. Like I'm not saying you shouldn't have an IRA or a 401k. You should absolutely take advantage of any free money your company is giving you, but you should definitely have life insurance on as well. No, I appreciate that. And years ago, um, say again, more options, no. the better for your financial well being. Well, which kind of leads me to what, what I was thinking about, because from my understanding, and from what I read and just from talking to a lot of different people, they just don't understand that insurance, by and large, it is a financial tool, you know, that can help you and can help your family. And you know, I remember an analogy, a friend of mine um, up in New Jersey gave me years and years ago. And and I didn't understand it at the time. Um, I don't want to experience it. He was like, Brandon's like, he's like, there are a lot of people who file bankruptcy, tons of people who do chapter 13 and chapter seven. He's like, it's a financial tool. And at the time, I was like, eh, I don't know about that. Like, it, to me, like, it seemed like a cop out, this and the other. But the more experience I got and the more credit reports I looked at and the more people I've talked to, you know, there are many people who have used it as a tool for various purposes. And so I don't want to liken the two things. But what I am saying is that the more understanding that I get as an individual about insurance and the various types of insurance, it is absolutely a tool. And not only a tool, but a very effective one, if used properly, can just not only enhance your own life, because you said, you know, and I think Sean said there's a a living benefit, right, as well as being able to delay that gratification and not think about yourself, but be able to think about your loved ones, right, and how it can help them, you know, as well. And it's like it's so it's so important. Now, do either of you does do do either of you deal with wills or or anything like that? Or is it just basically what you deal with is is primarily insurance? 
I mean, I have a business partner that that she's amazing. She's a estate probate lawyer. Okay. That mm-hmm. does. I, I'll refer her to do, uh, you know, well, she did my will. She did my living will. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that stuff is super important to have because you don't want to leave anything, unfortunately, in the government's hands after we go because you know families fight over everything. Like when money hits the table, and you're not there to kind of make sure everybody gets their gets their fair share of whatever that you left for them, things can get ugly really quick. Um, and having that stuff in writing with a, a you know probate lawyer is, is mm-hmm. awesome. You know, I went through the whole process with her, and she was amazing, and um, it opened up my eyes on, on like how nitty and gritty those those terms can get, and it really clarifies everything. I mean, from from what happens to your kids to what happens to their education. I mean, you could stipulate mm-hmm. every little thing inside of there, and it's it's important, you know. God forbid, you know, two things in life guaranteed is death and taxes, and mm-hmm. you know, have your kids kind of set up correctly is one of the most important you know what what why we do what we do is for our kids at the end of the day and you know if something happens to us god forbid knock on wood uh you want to make sure you know there's a plan yeah and another yeah. point sir met is um within the next 10 years there's going to be the greatest transfer of wealth ever right so a lot of the baby boomers are are going to are expected to pass on in the next decade unless your parents are extremely transparent about how finances are going to work. You know, once, once their time is up, how do you know that there's not a will in place that is structuring uh, the passing of, you know, their finances and assets to you? You know, maybe there's a waiting contingency where assets aren't transferred until age 45, for example, and they're transferred incrementally. So life insurance is a, it's a tax-free benefit with an immediate payout. Right. So finances obviously become a concern when there's unforeseen burial expenses, funeral costs, other expenses to deal with. And, and sometimes that money can't be tied up in an estate or, or held up in a will. Immediate access to money uh, is, is a necessity and, and life insurance can provide a lump sum benefit. But, but also certain products can allow you to withdraw cash from them or borrow against them, or as Sir Matt had already specified, uh, to use part of that money to pay for medical expenses as a living benefit. So a lot of different options. I would very much consider it a financial tool. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Definitely appreciate that. So you know, a while back in the in the the podcast, you both mentioned a couple of things that I wanted to kind of circle back to with regards to to entrepreneurship. And so, um, you know, Sean, you talked about uh, you know betting on yourself and investing in yourself. And Sir Matt, you mentioned you know Maslow's hierarchy of of needs. So one of the things that I know I talked to Sean a lot about is this. Can again put you on the spot? What are some books? Okay, let me give you a nice little pause. Books. <laughs> either that you have read recently or that you're reading now that you would recommend and just give us a couple of points that you're getting from them and how it's helping you to grow as an individual and as an entrepreneur. And I'll start with you, Sean. I'm always reading. I'm always listening. But um, I would say some of the books that have had the most profound impact on me was uh, the book by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, that I read Mm -hmm. in my early 20s. It just kind of changed my thinking about, uh, you know, what, what's possible, mm-hmm. how I think about things and, and how your thoughts, you know, actually help you manifest things. Right. So you end up getting what you, what you place most of your focus and energy and attention on. Mm-hmm. And then the other book that was a standout for me was the compound effect. And so mm-hmm. I understood this concept very early in life that, it's the very small, subtle uh, investments that you make early in life that have a huge compound effect later in your life. So whether it's, you know, spending half an hour exercising every day, investing $100 a month into a retirement account, something small and insignificant in the moment has huge potential years and decades down the road. And 
that's actually partially the reason why, you know, Sermet and I are in a great business because we have uh, residual income that compounds year after year. I knew it was 27 when I quit working for Liberty Mutual that if I had bet on myself early enough, it wouldn't be something that I regret when I'm 45, 50, 60 years old, because I would have something that, you know, I have 100% uh, ownership of my sweat equity. Mm. So those two books for me were huge, but I mean, I have a different answer for every type of book, right? So if we're talking sales or marketing or, or, you know, business organization, I have a favorite book, but my favorite book is the one that I haven't read yet. Cause there's some nuggets of information in there that, you know, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And so I'm, I'm a curious uh, seeker of knowledge anywhere I can get it. You haven't read the autobiography of, of Sir Met Beck yet? What? I want an autograph copy. <laughs> That's you right. Got it. <laughs> Definitely. So what about you, Sir Matt? Um, there's a lot of books, man. I, I've been following a lot, like a lot of online mentors of mine that I've been following uh, kind of really changed my life. 10x uh grant cardone really mm -hmm. kind of helped me realize that you know set the big goal and do the work behind it and you're just going to get it it's, it's it's pretty it's a simple formula um but the book kind of really makes you especially if you listen to him he's got this phone uh i read it and listened to it and he's got this phone of just like yelling at you the whole time and like get your shit together let's go uh david goggins book was really good too i mean mm -hmm. Uh, but the 10, 10x really kind of hit home for me in a way where it really helped me realize. And as I was reading it and listening to it, I was implementing the things of what they were saying in there. And it, 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 trans it translated right away for me. Like As soon as I was implementing it, went. Implement this, went. Implement this, went. So I was just like, all right, I got my formula and just kind of just kind of run with it. it. I mean, there's a lot of guys. Patrick, but David, I, I love that guy. He's, he's, uh, he's my He's my uncle. He's my, you know, my online mentor. He's my big brother, whatever you want to call it. Uncle G, Grant Cardone, Napoleon Hill, Dale Carnegie. How the world friends and influence influence people is great. Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell, amazing. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff. I mean, again, like kind of what Sean said, with staying curious is one of the most important things. Learn learn as much as you can and kind of mm -hmm. translate that in your own way and implement and go. You know, don't you know, don't just, just don't take take in the knowledge, and but don't sit there with it. You know, put it in place and and run with it. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, you know, back to the circle board and 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 try something else. No, fantastic. And so we definitely have a lot of those books in common. Um, just to share quickly with me, um, one of the books that really impacted me that I well, there's a couple. Um, one was the uh, the color of law by Richard Rothstein, uh, because I'm a huge advocate with regards to giving a voice to those who don't have a voice, with regards to home ownership. I have a deep passion about that, and that's an amazing, amazing book. And then the other one of the other books I have several that I wrote down, but I'm not going to get into them all. But one um, is Principles, you know, by Ray Dalio. Uh, that's that's definitely by far one of my favorite books with regards to just establishing a solid corporate culture and really learning a lot about yourself. And I took so many notes and I'm actually just rereading it again because it's one of those books you got to read a few times to get a lot out of it, you know, for sure. And actually on my website, um, I, I have recommended reading on there just because I like to share what I'm learning. And so I know that having the conversations with you guys, like we have to constantly invest in ourselves uh, through reading and, you know, through learning. The other, another book, you mentioned Grant Cardone. Um, I really do appreciate his book, Sell or Be Sold, uh, because it's it that really goes in alignment with um, Never Split the Difference. I don't know if you guys have read that book, you know, as well, but, but just about negotiating. And really everything's like either a big or a tiny negotiation, you know, when you're having conversations and, um, you know, as they talked about the conference, right, power versus force. Uh, and, you know, really when I talk to clients, for me, it's not really about necessarily using power or force, but for me, it's more persuasion. 
many times and let's have a let's have a conversation here versus having a debate right and so you know and i want to always make sure that my ears and my mind and heart are open and i'm not just seeing things you know just just one way and and our business is a business about people it's a business about people and you know kind of leading with that what would you say year to date from 20 you know coming out of kind of the heyday of COVID in 2020 and dealing with stuff this year. What are some of the things year to date in 2021 that you've said that you've learned about yourself, either personally or as a business owner, you know, from January through the present, what are a couple of things that you've learned about yourself? And I'll go ahead and start off with you, Samet, then we'll go to Sean. Sounds good. Um, I learned that um, sometimes, I'm, I'm, you know, we're, Probably all have this issue. We're we're all of our own worst critics. You know, we expect hmm. the best out of ourselves. We expect more out of ourselves. And sometimes when things don't go a certain way, we can be even harder on ourselves. But sometimes you got to take a step back on that and realize, hey, we've come this far. Relax, everything's gonna be all right. And then you keep pushing forward from there. Um, you don't basically don't dwell on it because I. I may, I don't know if it's a mistake or this decision I made <clears throat> kind of recently where my uh, my family life and my home life wasn't as stable as I thought it should be. Mm-hmm. So was, so now, I'm, so the one thing I learned is I need, I need to really stabilize my home life a little bit more than what I did in the past. That's, you know, running around, doing, you know, living kind of a, a little bit of a nomadic lifestyle, doing you know, going back to the freedom thing, is good and bad. So like, I, I, I need to bunker down a little bit, and and, and that and that stuff is in the process right now. Mm-hmm. So it, it's that's that's the biggest thing I learned. So kind of learning that learning that stuff quickly about yourself, and kind of realizing that and making the change quickly is is key. And, and it, it took me a, a month or two, but we got it. We got it going. So no, nope, definitely that's appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing and being vulnerable about that for sure. Yeah. And what about you, Sean? I'd say the biggest lesson that I learned was you really have to love the process, you know, because that is most of, that's 99% of the grind is hmm. the process. So it's cool to have a lot of accomplishments and accolades, but those moments are fleeting, right? So the way I'm wired is I always I'm, I'm searching for the next thing. Uh, if I hit one goal, then I got to set another. You know, these are the things that drive me. But if I'm ever in a position where, you know, I'm not I'm not enjoying the process, then I have to pause and and kind of go back to the drawing board and remember why I started. Mm-hmm. So though I remind myself of that, like the early mornings that I don't feel like waking up. I don't feel like going through my routines. Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't feel like going through the grind, but then, you know, I remember why why we started. And so it's it's very much learning to love the process and enjoy the journey, not necessarily the destination. And you gotta you gotta be incredibly patient mm. uh, as an entrepreneur. The level of effort and persistence and patience that you've got to have is 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 way undervalued so most people i think if you're studying you know the grant cardones or tony robbins you know it's it's very cool to to see the end result of the success right the material wealth that's been created after you know decades of grinding but if you gave somebody the the blueprint and the formula to follow it, it's not that attractive right so people are not thrilled to start their day at four in the morning be the last one in the office, spend their weekends, you know, going through financial statements. That's the process though. You know, the end result right. will come. You got to love the process and all the things that the day-to-day mundane, uh, uneventful things that an entrepreneur goes through. A lot of it's not sexy, but you know, it's a, it's, it's a day in the life. Right. You know, it reminds me of, <clears throat> I think I shared a message or a video a while ago and I kind of talked about part of the glory in, in doing mortgages and helping people. Part of the glory is in being the messenger, but the glory is in the message, right? The message is, Hey, your loans approved. 
you know, you can be a, a homeowner, you can achieve a dream that you realize you didn't realize that you could, but you don't get there without the process. It just, you just don't snap your fingers. Right. And it just, it just happens. Like there has to be a set of events that happen that, that get you to that, that get you to that place and being able to walk people through and hold their hand. And, and I think it's the, the same thing with insurance, helping people to understand this is not only going to benefit you now, but this is going to benefit benefit your children and possibly your children's children and, and being able to get fulfillment, you know, from that, you know, for sure. So kind of looking back year to date now, let's switch it and let's, let's talk about going forward. What are, are a couple of things that you have not necessarily proprietary and planned, but what are some of the things you're going to be working on it now that we're in the fourth quarter and going into early 2022? What are some of the things that you're you're going to focus on with regards to growing and deepening your businesses? So either one of you can start with regards to that. I'd say for me, uh, the realization that the number of people that I can help or the number of businesses that I can consult is limited to the minutes and hours of the day. So I mostly get excited now about um, kind of breakthroughs that my team is having. And so my vision is to kind of expand the vision by replicating myself over and over and over again. Hmm. So finding young, hungry, motivated individuals that are looking for a great opportunity to join our team mm -hmm. and expand our outreach is where I'm focusing my time and effort. Fantastic. No, in appreciate with, it. You know, creating, mm -hmm. creating a legacy, you know, that is right. I'm not doing it for me necessarily, but the impact that you know, my decisions will have, you know, while we're working on the business together. Yep. There you go. And what about you, Samet? Yeah, I mean, me and Sean talked about this a lot during the conference, you know, after mm -hmm. after hours and lunch and stuff. Um, kind of exa exactly what you said, repeating ourselves, kind of cloning ourselves in a way um, and building the system where our system doesn't get lost or like what we do doesn't get lost in the right. customer value population, basically. So, uh, it, it's exciting to, to kind of get that going and, and really recruit recruit on another level, uh, come up with a healthy compensation plan where everybody's happy and, and motivated. Compensation plan is kind of going to dictate the culture of the business, going to dictate, mm -hmm. you know, almost everything at the end of the day. So kind of coming up with something smart there is very important. And, and being a small business, we can tweak that as we go to make sure it's aligned with what we're doing. Uh, but going back to Sean's patience, because I just want to get this out. We got we got to hurry up and wait sometimes <laughs> in, our, in our in our plans and, and yes. You know, so, um, but yeah, the biggest thing is 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 the same thing: growth, growth, growth. Not losing quality of, of service, of course, in, in in the in the middle of that, but also implementing the systems and implementing technology um, to help us do that. But the people, you know, bringing on the right people is is going to be super strategic and paying them um paying them in a way where where it's smart for them it's smart for them and aligns with the business and kind of like i want to like i talked about i talked this about uh, i talked this to show talk about this to sean mm -hmm. um kind of like having lifetime employees not employees but lifetime mm -hmm. partners just how we have lifetime partners in our sources and people send us business and people we do business with um People that work with us, I don't want to say for us, is going to be in that same same kind of treatment and culture is what I'm trying to do as well. No, definitely appreciate that. And, and so listen, I mean, this has been fantastic talking to both of you. What I would really like to do is probably at some point, maybe in the, in the early spring, you know, God willing, I'd like for us three to reconvene specifically to talk about starting and running and, and strengthening a small business, you know. Uh, because both of you have, uh, you know, a wealth of knowledge in that area. And I think, you know, we're definitely all peers, which is good, <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know, in some ways for sure. But I would really like to be able to share with that, you know, with our audience and remind people 
that if you are looking to to start your own small business and or if you are already in it and uh you know i think as sean had mentioned earlier like if you're just kind of finding it difficult to find joy in the grind or if it's difficult for you to get out of bed in the morning remember this just envision two people standing over you saying get out of bed one person would be jocko willink get out of bed <laughs> and the other one would be our main man, David Goggins, right? <laughs> Get out of bed. <laughs> I'm standing up because you're not. <laughs> yeah. I just ran 125 miles. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why am I in the heat? Because you're not. <laughs> um, but I really appreciate you guys a lot. I admire you both for what you're doing and in the field in which you're working. And so if anyone wants to learn more about Sean and about Sermet, definitely check out our show notes, Legacy Insurance Group, Beck Insurance, LLC. Now, just to let you guys know, Sermet, my man Sermet is down in Florida, you know, holding it down, down there. But he's also got business going on up in New Jersey. And, you know, Sean is here with me in the DMV holding it down. So thank you guys so much for, for taking the time to be with us on the Visionary Experience. Thank you for having me. Thank yes, you no, thank, thank you guys. You. Absolutely. Look forward to reconvening, reconvening in several months. All right, people. So listen, check us out on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere where you can get your podcast. Check out our YouTube page and our website, www.visionarylending.net. Be safe. Take care. God bless. Love you guys. See you all again soon. Be great. <laughs>